I just wanted to take a second here and uh, show you a pretty good dry mink set that uh, you can either make with a foot trap or a body grip. Uh, keep, keep an eye out for these blowdowns at streams. They're mink magnets. Um, whenever you see these root masses, I've noticed uh, when, the, when the streams are frozen over and there's, there's snow on them, uh, mink really check out these uh, these big root masses from where, where trees fall over. Here you have just a typical Pennsylvania small mink stream. And you can see the bank come up around here, you start getting into the roots. And right in there is a perfect spot for a body grip trap or even a foot trap. You can see how that those roots would funnel the mink right to that spot. And on through here. There's really the only other place the mink can really go here with with that huge obstruction would be on the high bank here. But I would be willing to bet you catch just about every mink traveling this stream, at least going up this side of the stream, right there. I want to show you another real good example of a mink blind set. Just want to show you a little bit before and after the set location. Um, this would be above it. Um, this is just a typical sandbar, rock bar, uh, grass and whatnot growing on it. Uh, the stream is about that wide. That's the main part of the channel. But there's a little side channel here on the other side of this, of this sandbar. And real brushy briary up on the bank um, so any mink traveling down here this side of the stream if you get to right here there's a, a tree and anytime you have a tree near the water a lot of times the root system um, will will keep the soil the bank intact a lot better than if it were just bear um, so when high water comes they'll get undercut and those undercut locations yeah a lot of times you could find really good spots for mink blind sets and i would probably set that trap right in there somewhere right in there easy to check um but just just under that it has some overhead cover You can see below here it's a it's a big pool so the mink will definitely be up against the sides um, and and that tree also creates an obstruction on the high bank like i said that's a pretty good spot for a good for a blind set uh, made with a foothold trap or you you could get a body grip you could stabilize a body grip in that little notch um underneath there and good little location we're on the same stream and I found another good opportunity to, to make a dry blind set with a 110. You look here, I just took my hand and moved some of that away. And what we have is a tunnel back there. That would be a great place. Great place for a 110, or you could set it with a foot trap if you wanted just kind of goes along the along the bank here now there's an exit to this tunnel as well that I'll show you comes through there there's a little bit of an opening but there's an exit I laid I laid a rock up there on its side, a little bit of flat rock. You could make a set right there, too. 
but I think I like the entrance up on the other side of those, those limbs there. I think I like that entrance a little better. Here I did a little more excavating. You can see, kind of made a trail that goes out under that tree. Laid a couple logs and sticks up. You can set a 110 on that trail or down in that tight spot. Just lots of opportunities here for sets. There's another location. There's a really big, looks like a birch tree stream side. And it makes a pretty nice place for a wet set with a foot trap. Right in here. I did not go over there yet, but I don't know if that hole goes somewhere. But I'm going to check that out. That could be a, an opportunity um, to make a, a dry set there. And right here, there's a log that crosses this pretty big pool. And it's the only log around uh, for pretty far up and down stream. It's worth trying to make some sort of dry set on that too. And that's the thing, I, I, I'd like to look for dry sets as opposed to wet sets because they take fluctuating water a lot better. Um, and after freeze up, they're gonna be your bread and butter. But I want to check that hole out and then I'm going to go up there and uh, see if there's a dry blind set situation upstream here. All right, here I am at the upper end of that tree we just looked at. Um, this is where that undercut of the tree exits. Um, it, it's a set opportunity. It's not as good as what I had hoped for. I was just hoping for a little bit better narrow down spot um, and something a little higher up on the bank that'll take more of a rise in the water level. But um, just, just want to give you some examples of what to look for. Okay, last one here. Um, this is a, shows this pretty good what I'm trying to explain. So pay attention. Like I showed you in that other set um, where we have a sandbar or rock bar type situation this this stream is full of them um but when you when you get a stream um that when the water level goes up and it breaks off and it has these little little side shoots this is a perfect example of that you could see a mink coming up along that bank and then gets to right here and he can either follow it up or a lot of times they'll go up that side shoot hunting are just traveling and there are lots of opportunities i mean there's opportunities for wet footholds in there um or you can travel up a little bit and uh, get get your trap a little higher and make a make a dry set that'll take a little bit more rise in the water and you can see it gets a lot more faint here but that Follows right up to right there, and there's the stream again. But there, there are there's lots of set opportunities here that'll work through some high water conditions, freezing water, nasty cold weather. Hopefully, uh, some of these places I showed you are good examples, and you can find stuff like that on your own line and uh, make some productive blind sets out of them. All right, till next time. Catch you guys later.